Hey, it's Mr. Lineski with Unit 7, Section 1. We're looking at Pythagorean Theorem today. Um, this is actually a little bit of a review. Part of it's going to be kind of new to you. Uh, this whole unit's all about right triangles. Um, so just as a little refresher here, the Pythagorean Theorem um, only works if we have a right triangle. So everything that we do in this unit is going to be right tri triangle based. Um, and so Pythagorean Theorem basically stated that C squared equals A squared plus B squared where C is the hypotenuse of the right triangle, and A and B are the legs. So as a reminder, the hypotenuse is always the side um, that's across from the 90 degree angle, and it's always the biggest side. So if I give you three numbers, whatever the biggest number of those three are uh, is gonna be the hypotenuse. So let's take a quick look at some example problems uh, of where we use Pythagorean theorem. Um, so here we would first wanna recognize the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse here is X. So we would say, oh, that's x squared is equal to 4 squared plus 7 squared. And the order is not important on the, on the legs. Um, for those of you that are comfortable with a calculator, you can actually just type all of this into the calculator at once. You don't have to break it up into pieces like this. But for those of you that kind of like to break it up into little sort of bits here, um, you can do that as well. Um, so from here we get x squared equals 65 and so we want to square root both sides to undo the squared and so that gives us an answer in simplified radical form of x equals square root of 65. Um, if you wanted to put that in decimal form if you did square root of 65 um, that comes out to be about 8.1 um, so either one of those answers I think would be appropriate there. Um, from here, uh, our hypotenuse is not x this time. Our hypotenuse is 12. So when we go to solve that problem, it's 12 squared is equal to 8 squared plus x squared, or x squared plus 8 squared. Doesn't matter. Um, again, you can kind of break this up into little bits here. And so that's an x. Um, so subtract 64 from both sides, and that gives us x squared is equal to 80 square root both sides to undo the squared. Um, if you're putting this thing in simplified radical form, 80 breaks up into 16 times 5, where 16 is a perfect square. That becomes 4, and then there's our answer. Um, so something new that we haven't seen are word problems uh, dealing with Pythagorean theorem. Um, the hard part about the word problems is trying to figure out the setup of the triangle, making sure that you have the triangle set up correctly. So make sure you read carefully, really understand um, sort of the dynamics of the problem. So it's saying a 15 foot ladder is placed against a building to reach a window that is 12 feet above the ground. How many feet away from the building is the bottom of the ladder? So if you imagine that, you know, we sort of have a building here. Let's say here's our beautiful building. Um, and we have a ladder that's leaning against the building to reach a window that's 12 feet above the ground. So this side here is 12. So it's above the ground. And then we have our ground here. Um, so we assume that the building and the ground make a right angle. Hopefully we don't have a leaning building. Um, and then the idea is, well, where does that 15 foot ladder go? Well, this is representing the ladder. So we put the 15 feet right here. Uh, and we're asked to find how many feet from the building is the bottom of the ladder. So here's the bottom of the ladder. So we call that x. Um, and now we just use Pythagorean theorem. So 15 squared is equal to x squared plus 12 squared because 15 is our hypotenuse. Don't know what that was. All right. Um, so this gives us 225 is equal to x squared plus 144. We subtract from both sides, we get x squared is equal to 81. Square root both sides, and we get a final answer of x equals 9. There we go, 9 feet, technically. All right, I don't know what's going on with my pen. Sorry, that says 9 feet. All right, um, down below we have our Pythagorean triples. Um, so these are just numbers that sides of triangles can have that create right triangles. So the most common is a 3-4-5 triangle. 
Um, any multiple of the numbers 3, 4, and 5 create right triangles. So if you take a look at the example above, that was a 9, 12, 15 triangle. So 9 was one side, 12 was the other, 15 was the hypotenuse. Um, so these are Pythagorean triples. You don't really need to memorize them or know them, but sometimes it's helpful if you can recognize them pretty easily. Um, so now we're going to talk about the converse of the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem states if we have a right triangle, then we can use c squared equals a squared plus b squared. Um, the converse of that, again, switch the if and the then, states if in a triangle uh, c squared equals a squared plus b squared, then we can assume that the triangle is right. Well, what if c squared doesn't equal a squared plus b squared? So that gives us two situations of inequalities. What if c squared is less than a squared plus b squared? Then the triangle is acute. What if c squared is greater than a squared plus b squared, then the triangle is obtuse. Um, when you're doing these problems, and we're going to do some examples here in a bit, um, it says that you should always start with the c squared. Um, always think of the greater than symbol as obtuse and the less than symbol as acute. If you don't start with c squared, those signs are going to be backwards and it gets kind of confusing. Um, and please remember that c is always going to be the biggest of the three numbers. Um, so here's sort of some examples of what that looks like. This is a very, very important part here. Um, you always want to check to make sure that the triangle exists. So as a reminder, to do that, we did that back in unit six, I think, maybe, six or five. Um, to find out if a triangle exists, that's when you add the two smallest numbers together, and it has to be bigger than the third side. So once you confirm that, yeah, this triangle exists, then you're going to use your sort of Pythagorean theorem for it. So what we're going to do here is determine if the triangles are acute, right, or obtuse. Um, so when I add these two together, these are the two smallest sides, 7 and 7 times the square root of 3. 7 times the square root of 3 is about 12.2. So if I add 7 to that, yes, that's bigger than 14. So I can proceed with Pythagorean theorem. So 14 is my biggest side, that's my c squared, so I'm going to say 14 squared, and then I'm kind of just going to put a question mark there for now. And we're going to check is 14 squared equal to less than or greater than um, 7 squared plus 7 square root of 3 squared. So the reason I wanted to put 7 square root of 3 in there is because a lot of you are probably like, oh gosh, what's this uh, you know, radical business all about? Um, they're actually not that bad. You kind of can leave it as is. Um, so 14 squared is equal to 196. 7 squared is equal to 49. And again, I'm kind of just going to put a question mark here for now. Um, you can type this in the calculator, but you need to make sure that you type it in how I have it written. You need to have parentheses, um, and then it's 7 times the square root of 3. Realistically, what's happening, though, is you're doing 7 squared and you're doing the square root of 3 squared. Um, so 7 squared is 49, and 3 squared is equal to 3. Or I'm sorry, square root of 3 squared is equal to 3. So now 49 times 3 um, is equal to 147. Now if you pop that in the calculator, it's just going to give you 147. So you don't have to like dilly-dally around with that. Um, and so now when I add these two together, 49 plus 47, that is equal to 196, so we can say 196 equals 196. So problem number one is a right triangle because the two numbers were equal. Taking a look at example number two, let's get away from those radicals and do something a bit more basic. So check, does the triangle exist? Yes, 10 plus 11 is greater than 14. Um, and so we're gonna start with 14, that's our biggest number, question mark. 10 squared, whoops, I forgot my squared over here. Plus 11 squared. For some reason it doesn't like when I try to draw here. Oh my goodness, what's going on? All right, well 14 squared is 196. 10 squared is 100. 11 squared is 121. Let's see if I can get that squared there. No, why is it refusing to let me write that? There we go. All right, uh, when we add these together, 100 plus 121 is 221. So now I'm comparing 196 to 221. Um, and when I compare that, I would say that 196 is less than 221. Therefore, problem number two 
is a Q. Um, and then this one here, uh, add these two numbers together. These are my two smallest numbers. Um, that gives me 12.3, which is, yes, bigger than 12.2. Uh, um, and so, yeah, we have some decimals here. That's okay. So 12.2 squared and then question mark 4.1 squared plus 8.2 squared. Um, when we square all of that, we get 148.84. Um, and we're sort of comparing that question mark to um, 16.81 plus 67.24. Um, and so when I add these together here, I'm comparing 148.84 to about 84.05, which this is clearly bigger than that. Therefore, we would say this is obtuse. All right, the last three problems are ones I would like for you guys to try on your own. Thank you for watching. I know it, and now you know it.